let's get straight to the point. All of us work with data regardless of our role, but very few of us were taught how to analyze data in a structured way. So in this video, I'll bridge that gap by sharing a simple three-step framework that basically turns ChatGPT into our personal data analyst with zero technical skills required. Let's get started. First, a bit of context. In all my past roles, management consultant, account manager, product marketing manager, I've had to work with data and present findings. Like most of you though, I've never received any formal training in data analysis, but I also knew AI could help. So after taking the top AI for data analysis course on Coursera, I learned that the key was giving ChatGPT a proven framework to follow and have the AI perform all the hard analytical tasks on our behalf. Diving right in, the framework I learned is called DIG, Description, Introspection, and Goal Setting. And in a nutshell, by using ChatGPT to apply the DIG framework to any data set, we're able to number one, understand data we've never seen before in a matter of minutes instead of hours, and number two, extract insights that we as non-data analysts would have missed. Here's a simple visualization. When you get handed a spreadsheet with no context, you're at 0% understanding. But with every dig prompt you input into ChatGPT, your understanding of the data increases. And by the end of the dig framework, you've uncovered insights that would have taken hours to find manually, if you found them at all. Two quick things before diving into a real case study. First, I'm using a free Apple TV Plus data set that you can download and follow along. And it's actually pretty cool to analyze real data from popular TV shows and movies like Avatar The Last Airbender, The Godfather, and Sherlock. Second, the industry standard framework is actually called EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis. But I'm using DIG in this video because one, the principles are the same. And second, the professor on Coursera probably used DIG because it's easier to remember. Step one, description. Picture this hypothetical scenario. Your colleague, let's call him Tim Cookie, just rage quit for absolutely no reason and left you with a spreadsheet with zero context. At this point, we need ChatGPT to explain or describe what's in the file as quickly and effectively as possible. So let's open up ChatGPT, upload the data set, select the latest reasoning model, and start with the first description prompt. List all the columns in the attached spreadsheet and show me a sample of data from each column. The reason we start off with this prompt is because it forces ChatGPT to actually look at every single column in our data set. And more importantly, gives us a quick overview of the data we're working with. Looking at this output, I wanna point out two things. First, having ChatGPT return just one sample output is much easier for us, the human, to digest versus having to make sense of an entire spreadsheet we've never seen before. Second, the sample is selected as Forrest Gump, a classic, nice. And it returned all eight columns from the original spreadsheet, great. But the release here is 994.0 and there are two genres separated by a comma. So this might represent issues for ChatGPT down the road. So we want to make a note of that. And I'm actually not really sure what IMDB ID means. Does every show and t does every show and movie have a unique ID? I'm not sure, so I might want to follow up and confirm. Next, description prompt number two. Oh, I'll link to all these prompts down below, by the way. Uh, take five more random samples of the data for each column to make sure you understand the format and type of information in each column. So why are we asking for more samples? Because that one sample we received might be an outlier and therefore misleading. Multiple samples help us spot inconsistencies. Looking at this output, we see there are TV and movies under type but we knew that already. This TV show has three genres, okay? This, these movies have one, all right? And uh, some of this is available in one country, others are available in multiple countries. Okay, so our understanding of the data set is increasing. Moving on to description prompt number three, run a data quality check on each column. Specifically look for missing or empty values, unexpected formats or data types, outliers or suspicious values. This is pretty self-explanatory. We want ChatGPT to explicitly tell us if there's anything weird about the data we should know about before proceeding with our analysis. Okay, there's several tables here. This first one tells us how many values are missing from each column. So for the title column, we're missing 589 values uh, representing 3.1%. Going down, 10% is pretty high. Whoa, okay, 99.7. This number tells us that for the available countries column, we're missing 99.7% of the values. I can double check really quickly by going into the raw data set and doing a quick filter or sort rather. I'm gonna sort this. And if I scroll down, yeah, most of these rows 
are completely empty for the available countries column. This means we should not perform any geographical analysis with this data set because we're missing that information. At this point, it should be pretty clear that first, although ChatGPT is not doing 100% of work for us, it's making our job as a human analyst much easier. Second, remember how the goal of the description step is for us to understand the data set as effectively as possible? I'm not gonna waste your time here, but in real life, I would have at this point asked follow-up questions like, hey, what is this TT number mean here? And ChatGPT would have confirmed it is the unique IMDB number. By the way, if you use Google Workspace tools at work, you might wanna join my newsletter to receive an insanely actionable tip every week. Link down below. Next up, we have introspection. And the purpose of this step is to have ChatGPT brainstorm questions it could answer with our data. This shows whether ChatGPT truly gets our data and often services insights we hadn't considered. Prompt one, tell me 10 interesting questions we could answer with this data set and explain why each would be valuable. And long story short, good questions mean ChatGPT understands our data. Bad questions equal there's a misunderstanding that needs fixing before we proceed. These first three questions are solid. How has Apple TV's yearly output grown since launch? If we're putting out more TV shows and movies year on year, it might mean we're capturing more market share. Uh, what share of releases are movies versus series each year? This might tell us about viewer behavior. Are we trending more towards TV shows or movies? I love this one. Which genres dominate the catalog and how have they shifted over time? Imagine you're on the Apple content team, right? You might want to invest more in the most popular genre next year. Or maybe additional analysis tells you the genre is oversaturated, so you want to pull back. Prompt two. For the first three questions, tell me exactly which columns you need to use and whether the current data is sufficient to answer it. This basically forces ChatGPT to show its work and tells us whether or not we can perform these analyses. We say that for question one, yes, we just need to fix 0.3% of non-numeric entries, we can ignore that. For question two, yes, we need to do some light data cleanup. That's fine, we can tell ChatGPT to do it. For number three, yes, we have all the information we need to perform the analysis, awesome. Prompt three is my personal favorite for the introspection step. What questions do you think someone would want to ask about this data, but we can't answer due to missing information. This basically surfaces gaps in our data set and helps us manage our boss's expectations about what insights we can uncover. Here we see questions like, what's the most watched genre? We can't answer that because we don't have the viewing metrics. Or from an ROI perspective, which genres deliver the best cost per hour of content? We don't have the production budget, revenue, or cost fields. But here's where it gets interesting. What if I had access to some of that data? Let's say my friends at Apple invited me into Apple Park and I hacked their servers. That was obviously a joke, very unrealistic scenario. I don't really have friends. So I created a fake second data set. And to be very clear, this is made up, don't report me to Apple, uh, with the IMDB ID in column A, total viewership in column B, and the total cost of producing that show or movie in column C. I can now upload this onto the same ChatGPT thread and say, I just received this data set from a colleague. Your task is to explore and explain the relationships between this new data set with the original one and how they might be used to join the data together. After running for a bit, ChatGPT confirms we can use the IMDB ID field to join the two data sets together and even gives us suggestions on how we can use this newly merged table. For example, we can calculate the cost per viewer ROI by genre, for example. After instructing ChatGPT to merge the datasets using the IMDB ID field, it gives us a sample output of this newly merged spreadsheet, right? We see that for Forrest Gump, if I scroll all the way to the right, yes, it now has the total viewership and total cost data in its row along with everything else. And I can even click here to download this merge CSV file. That's pretty awesome. Quick note, I'm focusing on the core dig prompts in this video to not waste your time. In real life, I would have branched out much sooner. For example, earlier when ChatGPT mentioned genre popularity, I'd immediately ask for that analysis and keep digging based on what it finds. The third step, goal setting. This is extremely important to get right because imagine if our manager asked us to analyze the sales data and after working hard to create 20 beautiful slides, our manager says, wait, I just wanted to know if we should discontinue product X. This is what happens when our manager is an idiot. I mean, uh, when we analyze data without setting clear 
goals. We have something that's technically correct, but ultimately useless. Obviously the prompts we use in this step depend on the specific goal. So I'll just share one example. Here's the prompt. My goal is to understand, and you specify your goal here. Uh, I wanna understand what content Apple TV should invest in next. Given this goal, which aspects of the data should we focus on? This is basically like giving ChatGPT a mission briefing. It helps the AI prioritize what's important and ignore what's not. Okay, this is very useful. So ChatGPT first breaks down our options for us. For example, if you're on the Apple content team, you might care about viewership, audience demand, and content supply, right? So you would wanna do this. If you're in the finance team, you might wanna learn more about unit economics and do that. Scrolling down, we even see a step-by-step -step roadmap. So first, we might wanna clean our data, okay? Then we build a genre scorecard. That could be very interesting. Then we rank our opportunities, layer in trend velocity. I would have never thought to do that. And finally, stress test with outliers. Makes sense. And here's the type of insight this process would surface. A true crime series deliver three times the medium views of all series. They cost 18% less per finished hour and have climbed from 4% to 9% share of total watch time in the last three years. Okay, wow, that's, that's really impressive. Pro tip, a final question I always like to ask ChatGPT before any presentation is what are the key questions someone reading my analysis would ask and how should we proactively address them? This prompt single-handedly saved my ass multiple times by anticipating, but Jeff, what about this? Questions from managers and overly ambitious peers trying to put me down. Just kidding, everyone loves me. How could they not? Two things I like to leave you with. First, the DIG framework plus ChatGPT levels the playing field for regular untrained people like us. It's a simple, repeatable process we can all use immediately. Second, although I covered the essentials today, the full Coursera course touches on other important concepts like how to mitigate hallucinations and debug weird data errors. So if you wanna level up your data skills, sign up for Coursera using the link in the description to take advantage of my special offer of 40% off for three months of Coursera Plus. If you enjoyed this, check out my comprehensive ChatGPT Pro Tips video next. See you all there, and in the meantime, have a great one.